about to say general things that have deeper facts that I am aware of, but to keep the general message clear, I will stay overarching. Many people who look like me feel called to a place called Egypt. They go deeper into a study and then they end up calling it Kemet or Kemet. They feel an affinity to the people, to the histories, to the hieroglyphs, to the powers, to the deities, to the nature of this land. Once they feel a deeper connection, they then find communities, scholars, archaeologists, researchers that don't look like them that are also called to the same place. This results in almost an argument, a debate, ongoing debates about what those people really look like when there is a land not too far off from Egypt, from Kemet, that undoubtedly had people that looked like them. Yet, there is a minute population that are called to research, to give honor, to give reverence, to upheave what's on this land, Nubia, Kush, Sudan and then maybe going even further into Ethiopia and the um, yeah so why aren't people that look like me called to Nubia to Kush to Sudan why are they so called to Egypt when a land just as powerful <clears throat> is right next to it and not only right next to it but throughout history was a rival throughout history fought to keep their land looking like people that looked like me and kept intruders like the Romans out while Egypt was eventually taken over by the Romans and the gods of that land co-opted by Roman ideology and philosophy. And Egyptian land was invited as a place of people all over the world can come and learn our sacred secrets. Yet we want to go there. Just like America right now. A place where people have a homo, homogeneous way of spirituality, yet it incorporates sacred secrets of indigenous peoples all over the world. You can go to a retreat right now in America and take a plant medicine from two sides of the world that integrates a philosophy from another side of the world and call it a sacred secret in a mystery school. This is Egypt right here. So, look like me to pay a deeper homage to Kush and to Nubia and the stories that have yet to really been deep dive there and you might say I'm interested in that too and that's fine but there's already a small number of the bigger population of us that are interested in these things in the first place but then we just go straight to Egypt and I'm not even going to talk about general ATRs African traditional religions I'm just keeping it right here on the northern cusp because it's an important reflection of southern United States of America meaning the Mississippi Delta River and the land surrounding it and it's an important reflection of Central America meaning Belize and the Yucatan and the waters there and the islands next to it like Cuba and Jamaica which are only a hop skip and a jump away these lands were all connected as mystery schools and today you can still go there in the astral realm and learn and continue the lineage that you're a part of in these ancient mystery schools wouldn't it be very convenient for people that look like us to give power to a land that stole our secrets it's like we're, we're continuing the curse we're already here in america powering their egregores, powering their capitalism, and then while we're here, we're still powering their sacred mystery schools in Egypt. It's just mind-blowing. So, I'm not going to get into the details like I said, but the Candaces of ancient Nubia are fucking pissed at us. They rode in battle. These are women. 
queen mothers. They rode in battle against the same people that built those pyramids to protect people like us with their lions, with their warriors, beheaded these people, sacrificed their lives to keep our sacred secrets secret and to keep our temples. There are temples all over Africa that are older than Egypt. Egypt is new. It's new. I'm talking, <laughs> it's new. That's all I'm going to say. There are more ancient temples and historical sites that have far deeper knowledge. But it might not have the glitz and glam that Egypt does, just like there are lands all over the world that might not have the glitz and glam that America does. But we flock to it. Um, this can develop in so many more ways, but I'll just I'll just keep the message there and just give me two minutes to see if anything else needs to come up. Egypt can be seen as an open university, a public school, if you will of mystics and philosophers like Jesus, like I believe Plato, like Moses, I don't know. It's all types of people through our history that went to Egypt to learn stuff, right? Think of it as a public school. Think of it, I'm in California, think of it as UC Berkeley. They have libraries, they have institutions dedicated to researching indigenous ways. They have artifacts, they have bones, they have marrow, they have blood that they research to learn more about us then they post all these in-depth articles teaching us stuff that we should inherently know just by living on the earth but then you have private schools I'm not going to say Howard I'll say something like Tuskegee that have lineage intellectuals that look like me that keep our secrets in private and that are passed down that do not hoard or hold our artifacts, our stories, our bodies for research. Now, George Washington Carver, that's another thing, but he was a medicine man. He did practice like Wango Hoodoo. He was a scientific intellectual that had ATR ways, pathways in his doings. Anyways. So... Keep dedicating your energy to the public school of Egypt. And the landlock that we've been landlocked will still keep landlocking. And maybe in 300 years, instead of being in America, which predated Egypt and was, like I said, an ancient mystery school that mirrored Egypt, just like the Yucatan mirrors what was taught in Egypt, just like Kush mirrors what was taught in Egypt, just like Timbuktu mirrors what was taught in Egypt. These are ancient mystery schools that predated Egypt, and Egypt was a public school that pulled all that knowledge together and sold it to people. Okay? Go visit the private schools. That's where you'll learn what you need to learn. Go visit Jamaica, go visit Cuba, go visit the Virgin Islands, go visit the coast of Venezuela, go visit Guyana, go visit the Japan, Japanese forests, deep forests, go visit Fiji. Those are where the private schools are. And you're not going to get everything you need in one place, like Egypt, like a public school. You're going to get specialty knowledge that each of these indigenous ways had. Yeah, it's harder work, but that's private school. <laughs> Only for the selective few. All right, bye.